On the 23rd of January 2015, King Salman, king of Saudi Arabia, announced a new minister of defense. Most Saudi Arabians have never heard of him. A post so powerful, whoever wields it can command all Saudi Arabian armed forces. The largest and most powerful military in the Arab region. And exactly two months after King Salman announcement, a massive explosion hits several apartment buildings in Bani Hiwa just half an hour's drive from Sana'a, the capital of Yemen, killing more than 100 people. Less than 24 hours after that, another bombing less than four miles from the first killed, over 200 people and many injured. But there was no time for questions. Yemen was under attack and there's no one to come to their rescue. This order to attack Yemen was given by this new minister of defense of Saudi Arabia. Two years later, this new Minister of Defense was appointed as the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. His name was Mohammed bin Salman, and since he took power, he's not let go. He has had his enemies jail, started war, and even destabilized the global order. But for someone so powerful and so important, we know surprisingly little about him. Who is Mohammed bin Salman? Why did he invade Yemen? What's the real story behind the bombings, and why is he actually stronger than ever? The Yemen invasion are a key part of Mohammed bin Salman. Ryzen, don't worry, I'm going to talk more about them, but to truly understand how he became the man he is today, you need to understand how he came to power. This is Mohammed bin Nayef, the formal crown prince of Saudi Arabia. He's being forced to give up his power and to pass the crown prince title to his younger cousin, a guy who's almost half his age, Mohammed bin Salman. To understand why he was chosen, we have to go back to our story. The Yemen invasion. On the 26th March 2015, Hamid bin Salman launched a military campaign, an operation he called Operations Decisive Storm. This operation has only one aim, to restore the government of President Abdurraba Hadi to power and restore peace in Yemen. The war started with this man, Ali Abdullah Sale. He was Yemen's president for 20 years since 1990 after he was accused of several corruption practices. The Yemeni's people rose against him and hope things will get better. With the help of the, the Gulf Cooperation Council, they forced Salo out of power and installed Abdraba as president. But unfortunately, Hadi's government was worse as he was siphoning off billions of dollars from the country's treasury. His government was not able to improve the lives of the Yemeni people as unemployment increased and inflation caused a high rate of poverty. This led to some factions losing faith in the government. One of these factions was the Houthis, a Shia Muslim minority group from northern Yemen. The Houthis believed they had been marginalized by the government for many years, and they saw Hadi's governments illegitimate. So in 2014, the Houthis joined forces with former President Sale and took over the capital, Sanaya. When the civil war broke out between the Houthis and the government force, which led to Hadi fleeing to Saudi Arabia. Remember I said President Hadi was a president installed by the Gulf Cooperation Council. The GCSE is a group that comprises seven of the most powerful economies in the Arab world, with Saudi Arabia being the most powerful militarily. So Mohammed being the commander of the army to win the heart of his father and to show the world he is capable of leading the kingdom, he launched an aggressive air campaign, which ended up killing over 20,000 people, including children. Two years later, he was appointed as the crown prince, and after he became the crown prince to solidify his authority and dominance over the royal family. He has initiated a sweeping crackdown on corruption within the kingdom, a move that sent shockwaves through the nation. His targets were not outsiders, but his very own cousins and high-ranking officials, a total of 11 princes, and nearly 40 individuals who had once held esteemed positions of power. The plan that ends up generating a total of $106 billion for the government has many real estate and other property were confiscated from the top officials and others imprisoned. There's no doubt about how powerful he is. In 2022, Mohammed bin Salman was named by Forbes, the eighth most powerful person on earth. Even though MBS is a man with much controversy, with the killing of the Saudi journalists Jamal Khashoggi, kidnappings of Lebanon president, and many more. He still remains a visionary leader and wishes to build a vibrant economy by diversifying away from oil, but on tourism and entertainment. In 2018, he loosened the public dress code slightly by stating that women do not need to wear Navadaya, a long black cloak, in public. Later that year, women were allowed to obtain driver's licenses, enabling women to go to work or school or perform errands without accompaniment. Recently in 2022, he was promoted to the role of prime minister in Saudi Arabia, a position typically held by the king overseeing the Council of Ministers. His younger brother, Khalid, stepped into the role of defense minister. With his growing influence as the country's top policymaker, Muhammad aimed to improve international relations. 
In October, he expressed interest in normalizing Saudi Arabia's relations with Israel, similar to the actions of the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and other Arab nations in recent years. However, this offer came with the condition that the United States would recommit to the country's security and assist in developing a civilian nuclear program. The United States did not accept these terms, leading Mohammed to explore other options. In March 2023, following extensive negotiations mediated by China, Saudi Arabia and Iran reached an agreement to restore their strained relations after years of competition, which had caused significant harm to the region. This deal also hinted at a potential resolution to the Yemen civil war, a costly and damaging proxy conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran that had been a significant challenge for Mohammed's agenda. This diplomatic achievement bolstered Saudi Arabia's relations with China, offering a potent alternative and a means to balance the influence of the United States in the region. And now with MBS aiming to let Saudi Arabia join BRICS, no one can disregard how powerful he will become in the future. Remember to check out this video that explains how Mohammed bin Salman can collapse the U.S. economy.